What's the most inaccurate thing your child has ever been taught in school? My 10-year-old son came home from fourth grade absolutely convinced that blood is blue inside your body and only turns red when it touches oxygen, and he spent three weeks trying to prove this theory by holding his breath and checking his veins with a magnifying glass. It started when Tommy's science teacher, Mrs. Williams, was explaining the circulatory system and apparently told the class that deoxygenated blood appears blue, which is why veins look blue through your skin. Somehow, this got translated in Tommy's mind to mean that all blood inside your body is actually blue until it comes out and touches air. Tommy became obsessed with this fact and started conducting elaborate experiments to test his theory. He'd hold his breath for as long as possible while examining his wrists with a magnifying glass, convinced he could see blue blood flowing through his veins. When I found him doing this, he explained very seriously that he was doing science. The situation escalated when Tommy tried to convince his younger sister that she had blue blood like a horseshoe crab. He showed her pictures of blue-blooded animals online and insisted that humans were the same way. My five-year-old started telling everyone at preschool that she was part alien because her blood was blue. Tommy's dedication to proving his theory reached new heights when he asked me to buy him a microscope for his birthday so he could study blood samples in an oxygen-free environment. When I asked why he needed to do that, he explained his plan to extract blood in a vacuum chamber to see its true blue color. The breaking point came when Tommy got a small cut on his finger and immediately covered it with plastic wrap, claiming he needed to preserve the blue blood before it turned red. When I tried to explain that blood is always red, he insisted I was wrong and that Mrs. Williams had taught them the real science. I decided to do some research before having a conversation with his teacher. It took me about five minutes to find the correct explanation. Deoxygenated blood is actually dark red, not blue. Veins appear blue through skin because of how light wavelengths penetrate tissue, not because the blood itself is blue. When I gently corrected Tommy with this information, he looked at me like I was denying basic scientific facts. But Mrs. Williams said blood is blue inside your body, he insisted. She showed us pictures of blue veins and everything. Are you saying my teacher is wrong about science? I realized this was a delicate situation because I didn't want Tommy to lose faith in his teacher, but I also couldn't let him continue believing something completely incorrect. We looked up the real explanation together online, finding multiple sources that confirmed blood is always some shade of red. The next day, I sent a polite email to Mrs. Williams explaining the confusion and asking if she could clarify the lesson for the class. She was mortified when she realized how her explanation had been misunderstood and admitted she'd been teaching the blue blood myth for years without fact-checking it. Mrs. Williams spent the next science class correcting the misinformation and explaining how light refraction makes veins appear blue through skin. She used it as a great lesson about how scientific facts should always be verified through research and observation. Tommy was initially disappointed that his blue blood theory was wrong, but he got excited about learning the real science behind vein coloration. He became fascinated with how light behaves differently when passing through various materials and started a new research project about optical illusions. The best part was that Tommy's questioning led to Mrs. Williams updating her entire circulatory system curriculum to be more accurate. His persistent curiosity had accidentally improved science education for future fourth graders.